It is one of the greatest medical scandals of the century, according to a leading health expert in Brussels. The Council of Europe Health Chief has accused major pharmaceutical firms of organizing a campaign of panic and unduly influencing World Health Organization decisions. And with European countries now burdened with bills for millions of unwanted doses of the swine flu vaccine, he wants an investigation. Our science correspondent Tom Clark has this report. Flu viruses can spread. 64,000 people dead, tens of thousands hospitalized, a country crippled by a virus. The predictions of the impact of swine flu on Britain were grim. The government's response, spending hundreds of millions of pounds on antiviral drugs and vaccines, adverts and leaflets. But 10 months into the pandemic, only 355 Britons have died. And globally, the virus hasn't lived up to our fears. Were governments misled into preparing for the worst? Politicians in Brussels are now asking for an investigation into the role pharmaceutical companies played in influencing political decisions that led to a swine flu spending spree. There must be a process to, to get more transparency how the decisions in the, in the WHO, how they function and who is influencing the decisions of the WHO and what is the role of the pharmaceutical industry there. I'm very suspicious about the processes which are behind this uh, pandemic. The Council of Europe Committee want the investigation to focus on the World Health Organization's decision to lower the threshold required for a pandemic to be formally declared. The world is now at the start of the 2009 influenza pandemic. When this happened in June last year, governments had to activate huge pre-prepared contracts for drugs and vaccines with manufacturers. They also want to probe ties between key WHO advisors and drug companies. Who is deciding what the risk is? Is it the pharmaceutical companies who want to sell drugs? Or is it someone making a decision based on the perceived danger? In this case, it appears that the danger was vastly exaggerated. And was it exaggerated by the pharmaceutical companies in order to make money? Our government, like many others, is now paying the price for being prepared. Citing commercial confidentiality, the Department of Health won't actually tell us how much swine flu vaccine they actually ordered. But it's thought contracts were signed for 90 million doses. Yet fewer than 4 million people in the UK have actually had the jab. Officials here are now in negotiation with their key supplier, GlaxoSmithKline, to see if they can't rewrite that very expensive contract. Britain is now trying to cancel orders for 60 million doses of the jab, but we're not the only country awash with vaccine. France ordered 94 million doses. It's now trying to cancel contracts for 50 million of those. Germany is trying to cancel orders for 25 million doses. And the Netherlands has announced it will sell 19 million of the 34 million vaccines it ordered. Last month, an investigation by Channel 4 News raised serious questions about the government's decision to order millions of doses of the drug Tamiflu and the possibility of pharmaceutical industry influence on decision making. Today, the Department of Health defended its pandemic purchasing decisions, telling us in a statement they were based on independent scientific advice to ensure the country against the worst possible effects of a pandemic.